Best Cinema Camera for Documentary Filmmaking in 2022 Part 2. Shot 1, Take 1, Audio Track 1. In this video, I will reveal which cinema camera I decided to buy and explain to you why I bought this particular cinema camera for wildlife documentary filmmaking. After many weeks of watching hundreds of YouTube videos and reading up about absolutely every single cinema camera on the market at the moment, I decided to go all out and purchase a camera that I feel will provide me with the best tools for the wildlife filmmaking that I do. Before telling you which cinema camera I decided to buy, I will tell you why I chose this camera and which were the determining factors in making my decision. Everyone has different needs when it comes to cameras and there is no perfect camera. But the goal should always be to try and buy the best camera that you can afford with almost all of the features that you feel it should provide you with. The factors that ultimately dictated which camera I chose to buy were that this camera has a 6K resolution sensor. It also has the ability to shoot in compressed RAW. I also wanted to buy a camera that can shoot footage in a codec that can easily be edited and handed over to a production company so that they are able to easily match it with whichever other cameras they are using during the production. Knowing that the camera won't overheat and will be able to work in high temperature and high humidity environments such as the film trip that we were on last week in Saudi Arabia where we were filming in temperatures well over 42 degrees every single day with humidity levels so high that I often would have to wipe my lens to get the condensation off it before shooting. It was so hot that every day that we were filming, we had to film from 3 a.m. till 9 a.m., then sleep during the day and then film again from 4 p.m. till 9 p.m. at night. We did this because we humans couldn't handle the heat, but the camera didn't show any signs or stress of overheating and worked flawlessly. Another factor was this camera's relatively small size and portability. Traveling with a big cinema camera internationally and having to go through customs and airport security is always a bit of a mission and it's nice that I was able to pack everything that I needed into one small backpack, jump on a flight without having to worry about checking in three or four Pelican cases to be able to take all the lenses and accessories that I need. Another great advantage about using a small cinema camera is being able to quickly put everything that you need into your backpack and hike up a mountain or being able to walk through the jungle by yourself or with just one camera assistant. This camera also uses V-mount batteries like these IndiePro Micro Series 98 V-mount batteries which are super strong and durable and are easy to pack into my backpack. This allows me to power my camera, monitor and LED light panels all with the same size battery for everything. This alone has been a game changer for me and charging batteries at the end of the day is so much easier. I also found these batteries far more predictable when filming in hot weather and I always knew exactly how long they were going to last and they didn't suddenly run out of power like I would expect from smaller internal camera batteries. This camera also features a global shutter, which is really useful if you want to quickly warp stabilize your footage, especially fast moving pans or handheld footage in post-production. Being able to build up the camera and break it down to its bare bones is a feature that I really appreciate. I'm able to build this camera up to as big and as complicated as I would like to, and I'm also able to make it as small and portable as I would like. Being able to use both RF and older EF mount lenses makes finding appropriate lenses for this camera extremely easy and offers me with a wide variety of lenses. Well, you might have figured it out by now, but the cinema camera that I decided to buy for my wildlife documentary filmmaking is no other than the Red Komodo. In the next video, I will be showing you what lenses and accessories I decided to buy for my Red Komodo and show you how I built this camera up to be a wildlife documentary filmmaking beast. If you haven't already liked this video, then give it a like and subscribe for more wildlife documentary filmmaking videos and I will see you in the next video. So now you can see here, like this is like, I'll put this here, like this will be the place where you can go to the next video. Look good? Okay, so go there. Just click here if you want to go to the next video. Just click it. Just do it. It's okay. You can do it.